and in this video we're going to discuss monotonicity and how and when you should use it in your own data science projects. So let's get started. Imagine you're building a model and you know the relationship between feature X and target Y. And you want your model to learn that too. But how do you do that? For example, you're predicting loan applications for a bank. In this scenario, you know that as price increases, demand for loan applications will go down and you want your model to learn this. But when you evaluate your model, you realize that your model hasn't picked it up and you want to intervene to help the model to learn the real world. Well, let me introduce you to monotonicity. The behavior between feature X and target Y could be increasing or decreasing at different points in time. Such a behavior is called non-monotonic. A sign function is an, is an example here. And when it is strictly increasing, we say it is monotonically increasing. And lastly, when it's strictly decreasing, we say it is monotonically decreasing. And this is how they behave. We can introduce these monotonicity constraints as we build our model. Let's do that next. All right. Now we are in Jupyter Notebook in VS Code. And you can see this image that you're probably familiar with uh, from the video that you've seen up till now. Uh, we've got three functions plotted here. Um, the first function is a non-monotonic function, which is probably what not, we are not interested in. Um, the second uh, the, the second and the third one is what we're sort of interested in, right? So monotonically increasing function would be like you, you have a feature X and you know that as the target increases, feature X um, also increases, right? So that's where um, you want, and you want to sort of tell your model that make sure you capture this um, behavior when you're modeling. At the same time, you have this monotonically decreasing function uh, for which I gave an example of um, as per price um, increases, you know, the demand is going to um, decrease, right? And again, this monotonically decreasing function uh, lets uh, your model know that it needs to behave uh, in that way um, for a particular feature such as price. Now, what I've done here is I've got um, some libraries um, loaded here. Um, the one that we're going to uh, discuss in this example is uh, the LightGBM and, um, and the and XGBoost. Uh, there are a few more uh, frameworks as well that help you, um, you know, introduce monotonicity um, constraints. And I have some links uh, at the end of this notebook as well. And all of the material that I'm sort of going through will be available on the GitHub. I'll leave a link for that in the description. So we have loaded those um, packages and here we are creating our target feature. Our target feature is um, some, uh, you know, uh, non-monotonic function and we're going to show that you can make, you can force a non-monotonic uh, function to a monotonic function, right? So we're just going to show how it's probably possible. Um, and then we have um, certain um, you know, utility functions to um, plot um, and, and get partial dependency plots. Now, if you're not aware of what those are, they basically help you understand how your feature is behaving um, with respect to your target or it could be with respect to any other feature, right? So those are partial dependency plots in, 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 a, in a very uh, brief way. Um, we do all of this... Um, using a package called Dalex. Uh, at some point, I'll probably have a video going over Dalex and also partial dependency plots. Let me know down in the comments if you like that. Um, so we have this, uh, these functions here, um, and then we create um, some data and we actually plot those. And so this is how it looks like. Um, this is the behavior, this is feature X1. So this is my first feature. So I've got two features in this data. I've got x1 and x2. And x1, with respect to my target variable, has this sort of increasing behavior. There is some noise, um, you know, to this as well. And the way we have defined um, the 
target variable. Um, there, we've introduced certain noise and we have sort of introduced this, this sort of increasing behavior for x1. And for x2, we have this decreasing behavior. And again, there is, there's some noise. And we want our model um, to pick up um, the pattern, right? And the way we had defined x1 and x2, it was using sine uh, for x1 and, and cosine for x2. So essentially, it should pick up those, um, you know, cyclic patterns like the peak and the troughs, right? So it needs to peak in the valleys and it needs to pick those, um, uh, th that pattern. So let's see how um, a model does that, right? So the first one, is I've got the XG boost, and again these are some simple uh, parameters. I'm not doing doing any hyperparameter tuning or any anything like that, All right? It's a simple um, XG boost model. We've created we've created the data, and here the, there's the dictionary for the parameters. We pass the dictionary and the data um, to the train function of X, XG boost, and then we run this um, Daleks. Um, explainer object on, on, on our model uh, with, with the data and the target. Now essentially this will this is going to create um, you know those uh, partial dependency plots and, 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 and give us those values. Um, when I run this, um, I get this um, you know some summary statistics uh, about, um, about the data. Now this is coming from Daleks. Um, as I said, I'll cover that in, in another video at some point. Um, and then essentially, I, I'm going to take the output from, from Daleks and then plot that. And you can see easily that the model has picked up um, the cyclic feature here and it's increasing. And for this one, it's decreasing, right? Uh, there are some pointy, um, you know, some hills here. But essentially, overall, there is this pattern of in, that it's, it's, a, it's a cyclic pattern that it has picked up. So the model has done a good job actually to pick up these um, patterns. So it's doing perfectly fine. Now the case that I'm going to show you is, imagine um, you want to force these to um, not behave in this monotonically, uh, sorry, in this um, cyclic nature, but you want to enforce um, a monotonically increasing or decreasing constraint. You could actually do that. Now, the way to do that, now in this example, this is the real data, so the mo model is already doing um, well to detect this pattern, which is great. But here I'm demonstrating that you can use um, like GPM or XGBoost or any other um, model um, with, these, with, with, with the monotonicity constraint parameter to introduce those constraints to your data. And in the case that I've already um, mentioned like price and demand and you know that um, you know that it should be monotonically decreasing so in that case you can um, you know force that um, constraint uh, to your model now let's see how to do that right so I've taken the copy of the parameters so the parameters we have at the, to at the top which is these parameters right I'm going to take a copy of that and then just introduce monotone constraints as a parameter, and then give this um, as a string of this, uh, like a tuple um, of one and negative one. So here we have only two features. And so what this is saying is that um, for the first feature, I want to introduce an increasing um, monotonicity constraints. And then for the second feature, it's um, it's decreasing monotonicity constraints. Now, um, in the documentation, I did not find a way to um, mention like a feature name and uh, and be able to sort of mention this. But you have to give these um, you know you have to go by 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 indices. Um, it's the same with Light GPM, but Cat Boost actually allows you to do um, by feature. Now I'll come to that in a moment. So, yeah, so in this case, we've got only two features. So I'm telling my model that for the first feature, 
you need to introduce a monotonic constraint, um, but this one is an increasing one. And a negative one basically means for the second one, it's the decreasing one. And we know that, right? So for this one, it's an increasing one. And so I want to constrain it that, you know, um, that it should go, you know, should increase, but should not show this uh, cyclic nature. And similarly for this one. Now, when we do that, and again, we train a model, um, and then essentially just, again, extracting those um, partial dependency plots from Daleks, um, you see this, right? Now, you do not see that cyclic behavior anymore, and you have this sort of continuous increase. And essentially, you've successfully introduced constraints. Well done. And um, so, yeah, so, so, and you can see it's here as well. Um, now, you definitely have to sort of evaluate um, uh, like what's really happening and you have to do um, a lot of analysis even after that, like if the behavior is what you expect or not. And so there's definitely need to, uh, stuff that you need to do, but still, you know, this, the, the, the constraints, once you've set, it gives you, um, um, you know, results as, as expected. Now, I have a, another example with LightGBM. Uh, with LightGBM, again, um, I've got this um, model. Um, and, uh, sorry, I've got this data set that I've created. And, um, again, I've got these parameters, which is uh, for LightGBM, are... Um, the parameters um, that we can use for this regression problem. Once again, I'm going to train this model using um, you know, the, the, the data and the parameters and get the partial dependency plots, and it looks like this. Right? Again, LightGBIM does um, a good job here um, as well. Now next, um, if we again, introduce and uh, take the copy of the parameters and uh, use monotonic constraints or monotone constraints. That's the parameter. And in this case, give a list um, of one and negative one, again, by indices. So one is sort of increasing for the first feature um, and negative one for decreasing for the second feature and then build the model. Um, and again, use uh, you know, uh, partial dependency plots and plot that. We once again get this um, this sort of, uh, you know, constraints, um, and, and, and it is behaving as, um, it's, it's, this one is behaving as it's increasing and this one is behaving as it's decreasing. Um, I, th I think, uh, this is much smoother increase compared to what we saw in XGBoost. So in XGBoost, so this is smoother. And if you look at XGBoost, it was much more, you know, sort of like pointy, right? And um, so, yeah, so I mean, different packages will give you different um, results. Now, LightGBM and XGBoost are great in boosting um, methods, but, but, uh, but they have certain different implementation of, of this uh, grain boosting. Um, but overall, they are tree-based models, right? Now, um, if I, and they're, they're very good models, essentially, right? So they're one of the best, um, you know, a few of the best models that are out there, even on Kaggle, are either being trained on XGBoost or LightGBM, and, and they're really good. Um, so, yeah, we have looked at this. We have looked at how LightGBM um, sort of models this as well. Again, it's not so pointy, it's sort of very sort of smooth, but again, it has that increasing behavior, and for this one, it has this decreasing behavior. We've been successful in introducing these constraints. Now, now there are various other ways of um, introducing constraints as well. So you could use splines. Um, mostly, I, I believe uh, splines are very well implemented within R, and here are some links that you can check uh, on how to do that using splines. Um, there's also the hist, um, histogram gradient uh, boosting. This is an experimental estimator introduced in Scikit, and it, it also has this monotonic constraint parameter, uh, which does um, uh, a similar job. And then we, of course, have CAD boost. Um, in CAD boost, probably give you a, a, a sneak peek here. 
So if I go to Camp Boost, um, and uh, let me search monotone constraints. So am I searching? No. Okay, M monotone constraints. Yeah, here you go. So it also has a parameter called monotone constraints, and it can pass you know, all these sorts of um, inputs. And for the for the for you know in, in for light GB and XG boost, we saw that you can give a name um, to the to the feature. It has to be by indices, so one or negative one, and so on and so forth. Uh, but in this case, uh, you could actually give for cap boost. You could actually give like for feature two. Uh, I want increasing constraint, uh, monotonicity constraints, and for feature four, um, it's it's decreasing, right? And you can give it the other way as well, which is probably mentioned here, which is by by index. Um, and so it's possible in cat boost, but not in others, at least um, to what I've seen in the documentation. And uh, the one negative one and zero is sort of universal, and they sort of have the same meaning across um, across light GB, mixed boost and cat boost. Lastly, um, we also have um, the TensorFlow lattice. Now this again um, is a TensorFlow um, package, right? Built on top of TensorFlow and then and Keras. So um, this is most like, uh, you know, building an, a, a sort of a neural network. Um, and so this implements monotonicity as well. So one of the examples that they have is, is here. Um, it's like, imagine this is like the ground truth. Um, the green boosted trees will not pick up, uh, pick this uh, sort of this pattern um, of, in, you know, of, of this monotonically decreasing one in this case. And so it'll, you know, get these peaks and troughs, right? So, um, and so maybe this is not how the real world is. And if you use TF lattice, you get these smooth um, lines, uh, which is very similar to the ground truth. So the TF lattice does a really good job at, at, at um, you know, um, at, at, at when it comes to the ground truth. So yeah, so I mean, again, this library, uh, I haven't played uh, with this at all, uh, but I know it exists and um, it's really good in terms of um, um, the performance metrics that I've seen and some of the notebooks uh, that I've looked at um, as well. So um, lastly, as I said, I'm going to leave you with uh, the notebook that we have gone through. It will be available on, on my GitHub and you can check out uh, within uh, machine learning notebooks. That's the um, that's the repository um, under MM notebooks. You've got monotonicity. And again, if you click on, um, we've got the .py uh, uh, file as well, and also the um, Jupyter notebook. So again, um, have a look. Let me know if this helps you, and if really uh, if really builds your understanding of monotonicity. And I will be posting more videos on such topics and um, looking for, 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 um, uh, for feedback. So, all right, thanks a lot for watching um, till the end. Um, and if you like it, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And I will keep bringing more content like this um, to you. Thank you.